Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. A new week, a new round of the solo experience. This time playing the PvE Nightmare, The Fields of Glory. While still better than the original, this current version has far too much objective uptime. Throw in the inexperienced and those who only play PvP for their free EXP, results in the most inconsistent PvPing. I am once again playing the Reaper. With its skill change and the meta hanging around until Dawn Trail, the Reaper is actually a very strong pick, even while playing solo. This was a fairly even round, landing 9 kills to just short of 1.4 million damage. I also got to play alongside a few of you who noticed me in this match. Nice meeting you all, and thank you for a fun round. And a big thank you to all of you for the continued support. Safe to say, I believe I can hit 3000 before the year is done. Enjoy today's solo round. Thanks for watching, and I shall see you all in the next one. So, game plan. I would have loved to have had a Dark Knight. My goal is to abuse the Reaper's area of effect strong damage. I am going to be using a lot of heavy, slowing multiple targets, giving my team the chance for easy kills. It is not important that I claim the kill, all I need is the assist. I am wanting to build my immortal sacrifice stacks. Having a fully powered up plentiful harvest is nasty when players pile up, and I need to be making sure that I use the arcane crest well. I almost never want to engage without, while also using it defensively for my own allies, which came into play at the very start of this team fight. I have already checked the minimap to see we are outmatched in terms of numbers, so I take this opportunity to dive on in and bait them to break my arcane crest. This regen could prove vital for those around me. I also waste no time in using my Grim Swarth for the heavy. This hits multiple targets, which is a perfect setup for assist farming. I do use the Plentiful Harvest early in an attempt to claim a kill on the Machinist to no success. I am holding back just enough to dive out should I need, or to dive in for follow-up play. However, the Adders had a different plan in mind, diving in following their Dark Knight's opening. I cast my Limit Break here purely as a defensive. The high stereo effect gives my remaining team the chance to back out. Reapers have one of the fastest Limit Break charge times, and it now lasts for 20 seconds, meaning you can pop it sooner and still find value. Having been forced out of the battle, as a Reaper, you must take any chance you get to Elixir up. I am none too worried about the Adders rushing the Last of Us down, as the majority are far too busy farming the Crystal. Only once their Dark Knight makes his move do the rest of the Adders tend to join in. I am still holding back close to natural cover. There is no real opening to get aggressive just yet, and the Immortals are farming their Crystal uncontested, ruling out a third party. This is very early game. I am playing for a new Limit Break and any chance to earn Battle Highs, in which I obtain a Battle High 1 shortly after the Immortals turn up, who immediately tunnel visioned against the Adders, just the kind of opening a Reaper can play on. Diving in, my Grimswarf allowed me to reap the benefits of assisting, landing myself that first Battle High and a full 8 stacks of Immortal Sacrifice. A Reaper is truly a class to fear. If you are looking to improve, in the early stages, do not worry too much about score or your own kill count. Build your stacks of Immortal Sacrifice. This allows for a powerful burst into groups, and aim for battle highs, play to live. The battle high increases both damage dealt and healing done, two effects which can benefit even more from your arcane crest. You are setting yourself up for success later in the round. Good reapers with a battle high 5 can become basically unkillable. Moving ahead now, my team has rotated to a large crystal. As a solo, you may want to get out there and fight, although going in alone would just end badly. Instead, waste no time in helping your team to burn down the objective. The sooner this is out of the way, the sooner your team can rotate once again, giving you the chance to head out to the next objective, and better yet, to collapse in behind the enemy lines, who would be fighting on another objective. Jumping ahead slightly, my team is uncontested on the objective, and I spotted a small group forming going in for a flank. As a Reaper, these are moments you want to join in on, and with a battle height 2, my damage is more lethal. I use my Limit Break to ensure our team claims the kill on the Monk. The Adders are catching up on score, and are pushing the Immortals back. This way I can ensure some battle high progress is going to my team, with our attention quickly jumping to the Dark Knight from the Adders, who decided to go in alone, without checking the whereabouts of his team. Leading into the kind of play I mentioned earlier, the Immortals counter push and force the Adders to group up. With a full 8 stack plentiful harvest at the ready, I take that chance to team up with the Immortals. Those unfortunate enough to get caught in a White Mage stun, explode within an instance. After making such a play, the key is to not get greedy. Take what you can and back away. We invested a lot of abilities, and my smaller group is now facing a full force Immortal Flame. This is the time to rotate out and avoid unnecessary deaths. Again using the minimap, I can see my team are moving in, and the Immortals' full attention switched to the objective. This is the chance for an aggressive play, using my limit break on the few by the crystal to force control. I could dive in further, 
However, being alone, regardless of my limit break, I would explode. I want this ready now to create an opening, and for access to Communio. This allowed me to land a powerful burst into the Immortals, moments before the Adders force send it into my team. Many of my Alliance die, so once again I need to switch to playing more defensively, rotating back and once again using the walls for natural cover. Range players are your worst enemy, so make it hard for them to target you. I go back in to kill this Paladin out of position, an accidentally misclick opening the PvP profile. In a situation like this, you need to stay calm. I had more than enough healing to escape and guard to ensure this. Having now broken away, my team rotate around to the Immortals, and I spot just the opening for a big play. Opening with my limit break, I was able to follow up on those fleeing with a huge communio, resulting in a very nice triple kill. Jumping right into that battle high 4, I push through a moment longer, in an attempt to finish off this Dragoon, who looked to be out of healing. However, their Black Mage hits me with half asleep. This is something you want to purify. If I fall asleep here, I would almost surely be killed. Having now used my purify, I back off keeping an eye on the Immortals' next move. With them to the south, this now means as a team, we could rotate north to engage with the Adders. Just as I arrive, I am able to land an easy kill on the Warrior caught out alone. I am now just 10 score away from that ideal Battle High 5, and with the Adders' positioning, I want to force them back towards the wall. This would force them to group up, for me to unleash my strongest attacks. My team was still holding back. This did not allow for me to dive right in. I have seen the Adders fighting well together this whole match. Only once the Dancer immobilizes himself, do I then make my move, with a poor unfortunate summoner getting left behind. Shortly after, I accidentally fat finger my controller, causing myself to limit break, ready to square up against the voices inside my head. Cutting ahead, my team are now struggling to regroup following the small crystals. Meanwhile, the Adders and the Immortals are engaging on the center objective. Looking at the scores, you can see now, objectives alone will not be enough. My team need to engage more in combat. We need to drop their scores down, while increasing our own for any chance of winning. With my team still rather spread, I engage against the Immortals, who are much less coordinated than the Adders, to see if I could steal any kills away from them. Once the Immortals were forced out, I dropped back to heal up and I can see on the map my team are pushing back against the Adders. However, the Immortals are pushing back against us. I hang around long enough to run interference, using myself as the bait, stopping them from third-partying my team, and with good cooldown usage, just narrowly escaping through the choke to meet up with my team. After that narrow escape, I need to ready up before engaging. I am worried now, many of my team are going full PvE mode, who think mindlessly jumping from objective to objective wins games, when in fact the battle highs earned allows teams to steamroll their opponents, to then claim objectives for themselves. I push back to meet the adders head on. With a battle high 5 and a limit break on hand, I make short work of the situation. A small group does join in on my counter push, however the adders are far more grouped up, and I am forced to flee seeing that the Immortals are also pushing against us, and I am forced to flee, seeing that the Immortal Flames are also pushing against us, using the Arcane Crest's bonus healing to my advantage during my escape. Jumping ahead once more, following some smaller uneventful fights, we arrive back in center. With our score so far behind the Adders, we are now into the third phase of this match. I now need to make even bolder plays, and hope my team can follow up. I begin by diving their Dark Knight, landing my limit break, and leading the charge, my team gains some momentum. With a Dark Knight in our alliance, pulling a smaller group together, ideal for my communio, and as a team we successfully jumped around 100 score, putting us in line with the Immortals, who are also flanking the Adders. A short-lived push, as once again my team are rotating north, and I am forced to join in, as I do not want the team spending too much time away from the action, with the Adders widening the score further, and this is where we come into the final moments of this round, which I will let unfold before you, considering the fact my alliance shied away, far more than the other teams, some good decisions made this a close, and most importantly, a fun round. Do not get caught up worrying about winning or losing as a solo player, as your actions will always be limited by your team. You win some, you lose some. Enough yapping from me, thanks for tuning in, enjoy the final moments of this round, 
and I shall see you all in the next one.